The 2015 fall regular season has come to a close. From the opening day to the first place tiebreaker game, there was never any let up on the intensity from every team. One baby, we number one. This past week was a little slow. The cold weather got to everyone. Well, almost everyone. So join us as we take you around the league on this special regular season recap edition of This Week in the WWBL. As you just saw, the bat of the Spiders heated up, even without slugger Luke Yokoi. On the day, it was a 1-2, with a huge win over the primetime players to end their season on a very high note, even with the rough 6-15 record. Boy, how's for Luke? The unthinkable happened. Brian Rabax and Russell Krause would go back to back to back to back with four bombs in a row. Yes, you heard that correctly. Four dingers in a row. Rayvax really set his performance up, hitting three bombs, four RBIs, and bumping his average up from 315 to 356. His production here on out needed to be similar, as he was Captain Luke Yokoi's first pick in the draft. He had played below average before today, but now seemed to be a solid threat at the plate. If we were going to talk about huge improvement, how could we not be talking about Russell Krause, a baseball U alum who before today couldn't hit for his life. A three home run, six RBI day for the mystery of the league, Krause absolutely tore the cover off the ball and even highlighted one of his long balls with this sweet bat flip. With Yokoi coming back, bringing his powerful bat and dancing pitches, and Ray Rackson Krause's bats finally coming to life, this team has the tools needed to take home the ship, but they just need to execute. So as Brian Ray Rackson consistently advocates, oh, yeah. Believe in the Spiders! Believe in the Spiders. All you gotta do is believe, man. All you gotta do is believe. They are as confident as ever with the full roster ready to go where's their first place, LA Yellow. Oh, yeah. We're not really sure just how good the primetime players are, as their 9-12 record is okay at best, but they would finish off the season going 2-1, taking down the top two teams. With no true leader of the team, all three members step up when needed, but the on and off shenanigans won't cut it as we progress deeper into October. With Dylan Ward missing, the primetime players didn't look any better or worse, but the solid bat will be needed, as well as his arm, as he is the self-proclaimed ace of this squad. Control will probably be an issue for the rest of his career, but he has shown signs of being a good pitcher. Jake Thaw stepped in and looked decent, finishing the season with a solid 2.98 ERA. Pitching primarily to contact, he will strive as the weather will only get colder, as well as most of the league's bats. At the plate, Thaw was able to get hits, leading the league in average at 489, barely qualifying for the league leaders with a mere 45 at bats, 50 less than most of the league. He's for sure made them count, as his average was nothing to scoff at. He would also have two home runs and five RBIs on the day, even though he's not necessarily known as a power hitter. Thaw got on a solid amount, and the other piece of his tricky puzzle started to turn things around. Shane Ravis had a very solid day, two home runs and eight RBIs, and his average finishing at a strong 409. The primetime players will need to hit next weekend, as they seem ready for their first round matchup versus the Connecticut Catholics. For the Catholics, their 14-9 season couldn't have ended any tougher, losing first place on the last game of the year, a tiebreaker game against the LA Yellow. Kevin Ravis would go 3-5 for five off of Andrew Moy, and Ven Russo would surprise the entire league, throwing a gem into the 6th before losing on a walk-off single. While the loss was a heartbreaking way to end the regular season, individuals played well going into the playoffs. One of those individuals would be Kevin Raybacks, finishing the year with 20 homers, 40 RBIs, and a 486 average, winning both the MVP and Silver Slugger awards respectively. As everyone knows, anything can happen in the playoffs, and Raybacks can only hope to keep hitting the way he did all year. While Raybacks for the most part has carried the team offensively, Chris Veneruso had a solid year, hitting 456 with 7 round trippers and 24 RBIs. Veneruso has been struggling a little lately, but can get back on track easily in the playoffs. Continuing with the offense, 
Ryan Smith needs to produce in the playoffs a lot more than he did in the regular season. He is capable of big things, but ended his season poorly, going 3 for 13 on the day, striking out several times. While the Catholics thrive on their offense, Benaruzzo has been strong on the mound, finishing with a 1.82 ERA and 26 strikeouts in 46 innings of work. If the bats can heat up, this team is dangerous, starting their postseason against the primetime players who do not have anyone too good on their staff. Finally, let's take a look at the well-deserving first place LA Yellow. They would cap off their 15-7 campaign on a high note, taking first place out of the Catholic sand with a Kevin Greer walk-off single. Greer was in the top three for all batting categories with a league leading 62 hits and would finish third in average, home runs, and RBIs, shaping his stat line at 456 average, 13 home runs, and 33 RBIs. Moy came in second in home runs with 15 and RBIs with 37, making this lineup very, very dangerous. As we enter the postseason, pitching is essential to win, and Andrew Moy makes the yellow very strong in that area. The Cy Young finished in first for every pitching category by a good amount, going 12 and 6 with a 1.17 ERA and 38 Ks in 59 innings. He hasn't slowed up and has been dominant every start, making hitters look foolish. We wonder if his phenomenal success can continue through the playoffs, as hitters slowly have started to figure him out, slightly raising his ERA. Something else notable, Cameron Greer took home the Gold Glove Award, as he helped Moy out in the field with lots of nice plays. In every aspect, this is a very solid team that everyone will have their eyes on in the playoffs. The Yellow are definitely looking to defeat the Spiders with ease in the first round, and as of now, are the favorites to win it all. Here's a look at the playoff bracket. This is anticipated to be highly competitive. Every team has a shot to take on the title. Here's how the playoffs will work. This will be a double elimination format. Each round will be a best of five series with three inning games. In the championship, it's a winner take all best of seven series. Even if a team goes undefeated, there will be no if series. Well, that's all. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the postseason. And that wraps up this week in the WWBL.